Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to bleed the front brakes on our 2003 Honda Rancher 350. Pretty simple to do. I'm just going to lift it up, pull the tires off so you can see what I'm doing, and I'll show you how to get it done. Alright guys, this is going to be skill level one. The basic tools, really short list. 8mm wrench, a good Phillips, a little bit of hose, and a container. Now, if things start to get a little bit difficult, getting those screws out on your uh, master cylinder may need to invest in one of these impacts. All right, as far as the parts go for this one, you're gonna need to get some good DOT4 fluid. I prefer using the Honda, and it's definitely what we carry on site. Beyond that, you may wanna take a look at this little gadget. It makes bleeding the brakes a whole heck of a lot easier, and I'm gonna show you both ways as far as doing it the manual way and using this little vice. So, once you've got everything together, I can show you how to get it done. All right, guys, I've got to lift it up in the air a little bit and got the front tires off. And uh, first, we need to go ahead and open up the reservoir on the master. And if you try to do this without an impact, you're going to strip out these Phillips up here. All right, they were nice and rusted in there. So I'm betting that this one has probably never been bled before. But Brake fluid is what they call hydroscopic, and what that means is that it actually attracts water. So over time, even though this is a closed system, it's going to draw in moisture. Now if you look at the top of this little plastic insert, I'd be willing to bet that what I'm looking at is actually water and not brake fluid, because that is pretty much completely clear. And I think what you're going to see is it's going to be really brown. <laughs> by the time it comes out down there at the end. Now looking up top, I am correct, because that stuff in there almost looks like Coca-Cola. So I don't think this one has ever been cracked open before. Now other than getting water in the system, which will of course corrode and, uh, and really do some serious damage to the seals, both up here and down in the, uh, the pistons, when it's down here, it's constantly getting used and it's going through heat cycles. Well, after a while, that starts to break down your brake fluid. So you need to pour in some new stuff up top and at least push it through down at the bottom to where it has some uh, fresh fluid to work with because I don't want to introduce air into the system. So whatever I pump out or pump down from up here, I need to keep replacing it. Let's do that manual bleed first. What I've got here is just some semi-clear hose and you've actually got your valve down here. You want to go ahead and put your 10 millimeter wrench on the end of it and then put this little bit of hose and then put that into a bottle or a, as I'm using just a drain pan just something to keep it from pumping it on your uh, on your floor because this stuff is poisonous and it'd be a real shame if any of your pets or small children actually decided they wanted to uh, play in it. it would not be a good thing all right so what we want to do is pump it up a few times hold and then open the valve. And when I did that, the brake lever went all the way in. Now I can close, pump it up again, hold, and then release. Close, pump it up, open it. All right, as you can tell, even though this uh, is a, not quite clear, but it's a little bit of a tint, uh, blue tint to it, this should be basically clear and when we get the newer fluid all the way pulled all the way down into it you're, it's going to look like water almost so this obviously needed to be bled because uh, i'm betting this same fluid has been in there since 2003. all right so you basically get the process for a manual bleed but we're going to go ahead and step things up a little bit let's go ahead and top this off and we're going to take this off and hook up our vacuum so now we just want to open it up to create a vacuum. When I do that, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and it'll start pulling fluid through. Now keep in mind, it's going to do this at a pretty fast rate. So you want to keep an eye on your reservoir. Because see, now it's already emptied out what we had up there just that quick. So let's refill and keep going. If you have more than one machine, I you really need to go ahead and invest in one of these. They're definitely worth it. Now, when should you bleed your brake system? Well, honestly, you need to do it at least once a year. Once it pulls through about, I'd say four times, it will have new fluid at least on the right side. 
Let's go ahead and shut that off. All right. Now what I want to do is just go ahead and refill the reservoir. And then we're going to reset over on the left side of the machine. Because basically all it's done right now is pulled fluid through here up to a T and then just down to this section. What we want to do is now get the old fluid from the T junction over to the left side and get that pulled out as well. All right, and that should do it. Just make sure you go back and put your dust cap back on because we don't want a bunch of dirt and mud and whatnot getting shoved in there. Now that we've got the system bled through, let's go ahead and set our level. There's a little line right here that says lower. It's actually in the middle of the sight glass. Well, you can't see it, but I bet you that one can. So that through the magic of editing, you'll be able to see where my finger is pointing. So what we want to do, knowing that we have new brake pads on the front of it, I can go above the lower mark because if I take it up too far with old brake pads, when you go to replace them, guess what? You can press those cylinders up front to get your, uh, your shoes to actually fit, and that forces the fluid back up into the system and overfills the reservoir, so we don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and get this thing filled up a little bit above the lower mark. With that set where I want, all we need to do now is just clean off that rubber seal and then put the cover back on. All right, set it back in. Same thing for this little plastic cover. And then we can get our cover back on. So we have to over tighten it just enough to uh, snug it down. All right, that'll finish it up. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. Got our front tires put back on and now she's ready to go hit the trails. Well, listen, if you need any of the parts that we use to do this or the tools, specifically that little Mighty Vac device, why don't you find us at partsdilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, we just want to say thanks for watching.